Hayden. Hayden. Money, money. Run, run, run. Welcome to TDB, guys. Are we? No, let's try. No, 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 we're not doing that one. Hey, everybody, this is Danny. And this is James from TDB, bringing you episode number 181. I have a feeling that that, that real intro is going to actually be in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> So, 182. 181. You just told me 182. Oh, shit. Look it up. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. Mmm, this does smell super And good. I don't know, because my phone can't It's 180-ish. 180 <laughs> early. <laughs> yeah. So, we have some... Um, Actually, I think you're right. Yeah. I think it's 182, but well, who cares? Um, So, except for our most dedicated fans, donate to our Patreon that doesn't exist. Yeah. So... We have the uh, 2015 Dinong Wild Ripe. Yep. So Snow. this is uh, a private Snow. production of Ripe Cooler. I've had it once. I was fairly impressed. So I am curious what the Ripe connoisseur has to say about Dude, it. Dude, it smells super like ra- like uh, fruit leathery and yummy. So this is really darkly roasted. Not roasted, but it kind of looks roasted. Super black. So, we're going to let this hang out for a second or two. Rinse it. Get it going. Yep. When's the last time we filmed? It's been a while. Two weeks? Holy crap. But <clears throat> we are in the midst of November or October. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, the tan... In a few episodes, the tans will be gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, go, we'll go from, we'll, like, relatively tan to, to very white. very pale. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pill. All right, let's give this a sniff. That smells a lot better than this. Man, you've just been drinking some straight up too much raws. The top of this lid smells like fish. Mmm. I'm gonna clean that off a little bit. Mmm. But the cup smells delightful. Correct. It does. It has a very complex aroma to it. Um, very um, lightly fermented, I would say. This does not have like heavy uh, dankness or anything like that. Yeah. So, I don't know how much grams grams of uh, how much do we have here, grams wise? Do you know? Well, it's supposedly this is like nine or ten grams. I used four or five, so okay. we got something. We got we got a ballpark. We're going cool. by feel. It doesn't look like it, we have too much. At least, no, we so. definitely don't. It looks like actually the, the cake is fairly compressed as well, and it's opening up a lot right yeah. now. So okay. yeah. So Denong is a company um, that's been making poor for a while now, um, and they've recently started to sell um, domestically, actually in the U.S. So um, wow, those leaves are very light for a. Uh, they are. They, um, they look fairly green. Shupu. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely on the lighter fermented end. Really deep, fruity notes. Yeah, sort of dark cherry. Yeah. Classic pour, but with some. Uh, classic ripe pour, but with some uh, some some uniqueness in there. Let's give it a shot. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Already has a nice texture. It's light. Nice mouthfeel. Definitely some of those fruits come across. Mm -hmm. Um, It doesn't have as much sort of like heavy earthiness as you get from heavier fermented pores. Yep. Yep. Absolutely true. It doesn't taste as much sticky. Um, It's just kind of a nice sweetness to it. And, and, you know, I mean... So it tastes like raw or red pure, excuse me, but <clears throat> it does, and it's it's leaving a nice sort of sweet feeling on um, uh, on my mouth. So yeah. I appreciate that. Last time on this one, as it's starting to really open up, so getting a little bit darker. Um, definitely one where Denny is having to push it a little bit in order to uh, get the full profile. The leaves are starting to come apart finally. So yeah. Yeah, so but we still, I mean, compared to what we will sometimes brew like, this is not particularly full of leaf. It smells wonderful, still. Not a super 
overpowering aroma, something like you would get out of a phoenix or something yeah. like that. Really but, ripe fruits. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of reminds me actually of that one hay chop rick that we yeah. got from Scott. I, mm. Yeah, I agree actually a lot. Um, it has more of that characteristic than I would say a classical red pewer does. For sure. Let's give it a shot. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I get a little bit of grain um, mm. to go with the fruit. Mm. Again, a pretty engaging texture. Um, it's not super thick. Um, right. It's not like super thick. But and it's creamy. velvety. Yeah. It's got an. It's got a nice silky velvety mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. Zero tannins on this still. I'm gonna reheat the water and try to get a little bit more out of this next one. Yeah, do it. And I think just giving these leaves a little bit longer to come apart is good. This is one of the teas where you rinse it and then you leave for like an hour and then you come back and then it'll probably come apart. Yeah, very nicely. absolutely, yeah. So just letting the moisture soak into the leaves is what James is talking about. And yeah. that is really, truly, it's, I mean, it's a function of the heat, it's a function of the vessel, but it's also, like James pointing out, it's a function of time. So yeah. if you were to rinse and then wait five minutes and then come back to the session, it would be much more potent than if you were to just do it like we were doing right now. So yeah. good enough. And uh, I'm impressed by how I don't think I've actually seen a pure that's this a red pure that's this uh, green, frankly. It's, it's not brewing up green or anything or yellow rather. It's no, but it's brewing up red. But just, but considering the steep times and considering the amount of leaf we're using, we would expect it to brew up. I mean, like if this is a normal ripe, it'd be brewing up something like a pitch black. Yeah. And this is, uh, it's dark, but it's not a pitch black. And it looks like we are uh, getting to the meat of the tea. Yeah, totally. And James, is, you're 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 finding that out by what you took a look at it. What are you looking for? Uh, you know the color of the liqueur. I can also take a look and see how much these leaves have expanded, and uh, they've continued to take up more and more of the gaiwan. Um, they have. Yep. Poking around there, you can feel if there's still like some bits that are really compressed together mm -hmm. still. Um, but we're starting to get a little bit more surface area on those leaves, so they're starting to come apart. Yeah, throughout the whole brewing, the um, there's been no sediment, really clean, so just high quality overall too. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Mm. Even richer. Um, I get even some vanilla creaminess out of this. It's a, a little bit different than your average vanilla creaminess and ripe. Mm. I'm getting more minerals than before. That was the first thing that I noticed. Um, the The texture is still wonderful. It's still really pristine, crisp. Um, it's got kind of a white tea texture. Um, Definitely fuller in this infusion. Um, a lot more going on. So they have some... some uh, let's do one more. Yeah, one more. Mm. I love the fruit in that. Yeah. It's and, nice. This and, is a great tea. Yeah, I was going to ask how, how would Enjoy you it. place this ripe in your scale of ripe, ripe poos? Of ripe excellence. <laughs> I was in a band called Ripe Excellence. <laughs> um, we, uh, we, <laughs> I would put this in, um, I would put this in the higher end, frankly. Uh, so one thing that I'm not sure about yet is the longevity of this tea as well as um, if there's going to be an increase there's there's been an increase in complexity some of the teas that we have tasted on the show just go full 180 and then another turn as you brew through you know the first three steepings the next four to eight and then the next through 12 it's just yeah. they just change dramatically this doesn't taste like that kind of a tea to me um i usually enjoy that but that doesn't mean it's not a bad tea it just means that it doesn't have that that character in its characteristic that being said, this is really yummy. It's got, um, it's really smooth. It is very smooth. Um, I love the fruit in it. I like that it's not too branchy. I think the branch, the branch sort of sticky, stick barkness of a lot of ripe poos can be overpowering and, and, and ruin some of the more delicate notes, which we're experiencing in this tea. So, um, it's also kind of unique in the greenness of it too. And, uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I think it's a great tea. Um, uh, what in terms of the price and all that stuff? How does this work? How are we, uh, how it is more expensive than your average ripe. I, sure. Uh, I'm going from memory, but I believe it was something like twenty five dollars for a hundred gram cake. Okay. 
So, so it's not unreasonable. It's means. not unreasonable, and in the scale of something like raw poor, it's uh, it's quite it's not expensive, um, but it is not. Uh, you can certainly find cheaper ripe cakes out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I would say that just the, these last two infusions, I think, have been the best. Um, and just it's increased the body, it's increased the viscosity, it's yeah. increased the mouthfeel. Yeah, uh, more but than zero anything. bitterness, no tannins. It's yeah. just got it's leaving with a nice, uh, a nice overall impression in the mouth. Yeah, this is really nice. This is a 2015, so this hopefully it was going to improve with age. Um, yeah. and maybe some of those. Um, I would think so because this tea is also a little bit greener, and exactly. I would think those green notes would continue to evolve yeah yeah so this has been a really delightful tea to enjoy um thanks to the dudes and ladies over at dinong dinong yep tea yeah check, check them, them out, out. Yeah. What are their, what's their url uh I, i'm not sure but if i were to guess it, oh we dinong tea.com excuse me yeah at least that's email what them they're... info at dinong tea.com you can even give them a call uh but you can look that up on yeah your, for absolutely yourself. um so, Denny, where can someone find out more about tea? Well, check us out on tdb.org. That's the website. Subscribe down below for a weekly video or two. Um, check us out. Uh, check the blog out. We have lots of great written content, all written by James, the god of tea. <laughs> tea incarnate. Sheng Den. What's that guy's tea, tea master's name? Sheng Jin? Sheng Jin? I don't know. Some, there's there's some a dude. S- co- post in the comments if you know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> um... Subscribe to all the stuff, do all the relevant things, love us, like, um, if you like the video, do like the video. Subscribe for more content, and we will see you guys next time. Cheers!